Uh, I'm Dick Miller. Jill and I run Miller Microcomputer Services. We also, once a month, uh, run a group somewhat like this out in Natick, but it's on a Thursday afternoon. So if you can spring time during the day, come on out to Natick. It's uh, on the commuter rail line between Boston and Worcester, and it's an easy walk from the Natick Center Railroad Station. Uh, so I have some cards. If anyone's interested, uh, take a card, especially if you can find them. Here we go. These are cards for that user group. I'll leave them here. Everyone's welcome to one if they like. Uh, and of course, it's free. We're talking about free open source software, and meetings are free. Uh, I've been showing a slideshow, and it's pictures I take with a camera small enough to carry in my pocket, important for me. I prepare it on a computer that's cheap enough so that um, it's, it's your common average uh, notebook, netbook computer. If you've got a computer, you can probably do what I'm doing. And, uh, I take so-so pictures and turn them into much nicer pictures because I use a program for doing that. But it's got to be one that runs well on a small computer. It's got to be one that takes small camera pictures and makes them pretty nice. Uh, and by the way, a lot of my pictures look quite nice, two feet by three feet in blow-ups. So you can do nice work uh, without getting very expensive equipment. This computer, by the way, is brand new to me. I've had it a month, and uh, it says it's a $500 computer. I bought it on sale for $300. We just stopped at Micro Center. They've got it on sale for $400. So uh, I say it's in your common denominator set of computers, not the $1,000 ones that might run Photoshop well enough. Uh, Does the screen detach? This, this screen does not detach, however, you can fold it all the way backward and turn it into a tablet. Oh, okay. I'll do something like this. And the advantage is you can't leave it behind. I consider this a big advantage oh, compared to the ones that detach. Uh, it also, um, ooh, I'm not going to tell you the name, three-letter acronym, a new screen uh, design. TS something maybe, I'm not sure I've got it right. Sorry, anyway, uh, it's a lot more vivid from the side oh, IPS, than the last ones I've had. IPS? IPS. I mean. I, IPS, I think so, thank yeah. you. Uh, I didn't come prepared to talk about it, but it's here, and I like the uh, side angle vividness of the screen considerably more than past ones. Yeah. So, it has some nice features. Other than that, it's just a good standard netbook. 4 gigs of RAM, 500 gigs of hard drive. I pulled out the 500 gigs of hard drive. I put in a 240 gig uh, new Intel solid state drive. 530? And uh, I liked it because it's their industrial heavy duty one translated down now for more normal uh, use. Much lower price. So I paid $110 and I'm very pleased with its performance. I'm not finishing everything. We want to talk. I want to focus, but I did want to give you a quick taste that I'm running a plain computer, but it is running a little faster because of the solid state drive. Very nice upgrade. Uh, uh, so other than that, quite standard stuff, and I want software that does good photo work on that. I also helped develop this software only because years ago it looked so good to me. I wrote to the author. I said, hey, this is the best stuff I've seen in a long time, but, and I suggested an improvement. He liked it. We've been talking regularly ever since. He's from Texas. He's worked many years in Boston. His wife is from Germany, and they're retired to Munich in Germany. Nice. I sent him a note at night. I've got the solution in the morning when I wake up. Uh, and uh, we get along just fine. Uh, in fact, he's going to be joining you today, too, because he put together about a 20-minute intro to how to use Photox 
and it's better than what I'll do in an hour. So I'm going to run that as part of what I do, and then come back in and show you more. But first, this is just an example of its built-in slideshow, which is one of the better slideshow programs I've ever seen. And it has a lot of built-in things like that, that do things very nicely. And as always with a program that you haven't mastered yet, it does a lot more things than the ones you thought it could do as you get around to meeting them. The slideshow, for instance, can be preset to zoom in to a point within a photograph and hang in there for a while once it gets there. So you can set up Ken Burns, uh, take, a, take a fixed photograph and make it look active, things of that sort. So lots of tricks. Um, you can pre-program it in nice ways. I'm going to get out of it. And it was just sitting there to show you that you can get good photographs from your pocket camera. And uh, what I want to do to start is totally different from Photox, actually. I want to start with that. Whoops. That. And stare for a minute. Ponder for a minute. <laughs> Everyone see what's going on here? And we're talking about cameras here. <laughs> and we're talking about Photoshop type photo processing here too. And in fact, once cameras came along, miracles didn't quite look like miracles anymore. But Photoshop put that back. Uh, now, the reason I mention that Give some demos. Okay. <laughs> this is a picture, Jill and me and two of our favorite friends, and we're standing in, in a street in the south of Spain. And it's North hot of out. Spain. Hmm? North of Spain. South of Spain. South of Spain. Which you have a... <laughs> Near France. Doesn't look like Spain to me. <laughs> Near France. Uh, which would be the north of Spain? It's across the Prava. So Prava. in any case, south of Spain. And here we are, very close to France. And um, it's high out. But our friend Mike Cornelison, who's the author of Photogs, took our photo in the street and did this to it. So this is a good example of that going on. Now, if you've been using Photoshop, or if you've been using the GIMP, or if you've been using Elements, or some other fairly standard photo program, you know you do this stuff with layers. We don't in Photox. In Photox, you take what you want, you put it where you want it. You don't have to use layers. If you want to make a whole screen full of what you want, you can call it a layer, and you can do that. But you can just select the part you want and point it where you want. And he selected us from the photo of the street scene and plunked us into this other view without layers. So that's one example. I have one more. Same favorite friend. And now she's turned into a bit of a painting, and it's even on artist's canvas. And uh, so you can do a lot of things starting from a simple photograph, and they are lying creatively. And it starts with the most obvious ones, just straightening out the bad picture, correcting perspective distortions, brightness, color, contrast, that sort of thing. They're all cheats which you're applying either to undo distortions or to create new desirable distortions. We call that art. So, is it okay to ask questions about or do you want to sleep in? Pardon? Is it okay to ask questions about or do you Oh, sure. Uh, in particular, if I didn't say something was clear, stop me instantly because I want it to be clear. And if it's a quickie, I'll answer it. What's the question? Well, I was wondering about in the previous slide when you said you don't use layers. So what happens if you point something down and then you want to like move it a little, uh, like you want to move it a little bit? And then, and then Just like you move a mouse cursor. You move the whole thing to wherever you want and lay it there. Well, once you've plunked it, it down. Yeah. Oh, after you plunk it down, you still do the same thing. You can keep that 
that section, it's, it's called a selected area, and you can select any area you want, and you can save it as an interim step. So you can come back and redo it if you wish. So if you uh, so if you move it again after like it down the background that was behind it's still there. It's yeah. up to you. At a stage along the way, you can say this is what I want to keep, and you can lose the rest and lock it up as a single image again. That's up to you. Yeah. You can it's, keep you can keep the working components as long as you yeah. wish. And you can back up a lot of layer, a lot of levels of uh, changes. You mean you, you track everything you want to move as different elements in full talks? It's, it's, you, you, no. can call it, you can call it an element if you wish. It's an area. You oh. select an area. And so those four people were an area. Oh. You could move around, put where you want, make it larger, make it smaller, tilt it a little. With it. How did you eliminate the little the, the background behind the people? Did you have to go over the silhouette of the person in great detail? Yes. Yes and no. Mm. Uh, in fact, that's a very good answer for a lot of it. And uh, a lot there of that are a lot of ways to. I, I'm going to stall Do because Mike Cornelison is going to answer better than I will, okay. more quickly with better demos. Yeah. Do okay. the demo Different first. tools, various tools for doing that by mm -hmm. hand automatically, automatically with different priorities attached, mm -hmm. with feathering, without feathering, etc., etc. Yes, ways okay. to get there from here. Yeah. Uh, but let me come to it in place. It'll be easier and more <coughs> explained. Because the way you explain that, it sounds like uh, you may not be calling it layers, but it's basically doing layers under the name. No, but no. you can't take, no. you, once you've set it down there, um, and gone on to the next step. You can only do a serial undos. You can't go and pick up that element and do something else with it after you've done the well, next step. Well, yes, you thing. can if you save it. But in, you in could general, save it and then reuse it. But I wouldn't normally. Dick? Yeah. So pointing well, down may be helpful here. From Stop from a, next. Temporary. From a human interface user experience point of view, Botox would be described as intentional, and GIMP and Photoshop would be described as extensional. You modify pixels using tools of your choice, and it's up to you to figure out how you're going to do it with Photoshop or GIMP, whereas Photox is organized about what you're going to do. So its primitives are more like the plugins that you get for Photoshop. Okay. Let's stall that. So one he, he's until. not going to give you layers because that's a how to get it done. He's going to give you what <coughs> you need to do it. Let's let's wait for the demo on that one. Good point, but I think the demo will smooth the way. Absolutely. In any case, I'm just giving a few very quick examples of things you might want to do to a photograph. Uh, the things I want to do with a photograph in particular are just change. The balance, the amount of it I'm seeing, the uh, lighting on it, and the miracle of miracles, sharpen it. My background is electro-optical physics. And if there's one thing I know, it's that you can't sharpen an image. We do it all the time. In Photox, we have three different ways of doing it, and each one of them is very flexible. So uh, there's an old rule gone bust. Uh, and I'm glad, because I can improve photographs that aren't that good. Okay, uh, that's the part I wanted for that. Now, uh, what I would like to do is, I've already introduced you to Mike Cornelison, and instead of going into Photox now, I'm going to go into Firefox now. I'm going to go to Munich now. And here I am. And here is the home page for Photox uh, at Cornelix, K O R N E L X <coughs> dot com and uh, Photox.html. 
And if I go down just a little ways in here, here we go, about one page down, one screen down, Photox video. And oh, do I have, I don't have sound plugged in. Is there a sound? I bet that's one. Looks suspiciously 3.5 meter. No meter. Headphones. Hmm. Or has headphones, headphones. Headphones stick. Put on headphones. Click right. on headphones. Got other things to pull on too. Okay, now we're getting there. Is it running yet? I guess it is. Oh, we don't have sound. Is there anything? Is there anything we can do for sound over there? Click on sound settings and make sure it's going to the right output. You might go over here to the bigger console. Or click on sounds because it may be setting it to a different. I mean, what's plugged into the laptop? There's a microphone. Yeah, setting. because because of course audio, you might want to check the thing. Go to sound settings. We're calling in the experts, folks. Meanwhile, the version of Photox that's in the Ubuntu Software Center is very sadly out of date. Uh, oh, I'm looking at AUR. Do not load that one. I'm looking at AUR. If you like Ubuntu, you're going to want to go to the Ubuntu Software Center and get Photox, F-O-T-O-X-X. -X. And when you do, it'll look exactly right, and it'll be exactly wrong. It's about two years old. So I don't know why. It's a disgrace. Oh, no. I, I, I talked to him about this. The packager is going to update it, but he was waiting for his uh, update a couple months ago that was uh, bringing something up to date. So it's supposed to be caught up, but if you go to getdev.net, oh. that's only three days out of date. But if you go to the Photox site, cornelix.com, you'll get the very latest one every time. How long did you, you take So the just time? go there, it's easy. Yeah. Um, but you have to know that secret. Yeah, how long did you take to compile that? Because I'm trying to compile it still. To compile it? Yeah. Quite quick. Uh, two minutes. No, it's a dev install. Dot dev it's, it's, file, it's a so dev install. Yeah. Because, because I have to compile it from source by myself. I'm a package maintainer. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know In any case. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't, don't do it from the Ubuntu sources because it's <coughs> two years old. I know. Why the lack of sound? We have a I don't know. Make a test noise. What, uh, what about sound that? settings Smart. up there. Yep. Sound settings. Really? Um, well, I was just wondering uh, after saw you did oh, it. Hit the test sound button. Yeah. I could switch to my speakers, it's not that noisy. Change to um, HDMI. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Not impressed. Tell me where I like the manual controls in my room better. Tell you what I think I'm gonna do next. That's how we're going to do it, folks. Okay. <laughs> Work. Back to the gallery view. Wait. The image is highlighted. It's highlighted. Mike Cornelison. This is a one. demo of basic photox operations. I hope to provide a general understanding of how it works so you can more quickly start using it productively. The available function groupings are shown here. Each of these has a menu of the available functions. Scroll to the 
bottom of the gallery, scroll to the top, scroll in pages, or scroll in rows, or slow scroll to scan for an image that you're looking for. You can also use the mouse wheel to scroll, as I'm doing now, or of course you can use the scroll bar. make these thumbnails larger or smaller all the way down to a list of files. You can pop up the thumbnails into larger images like this. This facilitates comparing images side by side. You can also zoom in on the images using the mouse wheel. You can navigate to other directories using this top panel path, file path up here. Go to images, within images go to Miko, go to 2013. The top button contains all of the top directories that you have designated for image files, and you can go directly to any of them. There's a bookmark feature, which allows you to go directly to any named uh, location in your image library, like this. Things immediately you simply move the so outline good. to get the desired margins. Well, it's not fun. Uh, you can even get fun. some guidelines if you want them just by clicking on the image. Done. Undo. Retouch combo is the main function for brightness, color, and contrast. Increase the brightness, decrease. Increase the contrast, decrease. Higher color, lower color. Color temperature, cooler, warmer. You can also adjust the curve directly to optimize the brightness distribution. Like this. This is a function for operating directly on the brightness distribution. Flatten is sometimes a very good way to improve overall contrast. Sometimes it works miracles. 
has modest results. I like it a lot. It's useful. Undo, redo. Tone mapping is a way to increase local contrast when global contrast is inadequate. Watch what happens to the tree leaves. Now that's an extreme case there. Bring it back. You can independently adjust low, medium, and high contrast pixels. They have slightly different effects on the image appearance. I'll leave it at this point. Undo tone mapping. Undo flatten. Undo retouch combo. this button here, you can save a new version, which leaves the original unchanged. You can uh, save it as a new file, which you enter or select, or you can replace the original file. I will save a new version. We now have version 2 of this file. Go back, that was version 1, and that was the original I started with. You can get help at any time by pressing F1. The relevant section of the user guide will be displayed. I'm going to illustrate how to edit an object or area Here's separately from the waves. background. Select an area. There are several methods to select an area. The simplest would be freehand draw. The idea is to enclose a space that you're going to edit. When I click on the enclosed space, it's now finished, and I can edit that space. For example, can 
special effects available in Photogs. You can see all of them on the Photogs website. substantial amounts of time on a large image. You can see what it does more clearly looking at the fisherman's face. I'm going to add tone mapping. This is the magnifying function, like which allows you to inspect random portions of the image at high magnification very easily and conveniently. The CIA tool. <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate high dynamic range or HDR imaging. HDR combines photos with different exposure levels. <coughs> to create an image that is more evenly exposed. The two images at the top are the input images 
the first one has good exposure for the sky and the rest is underexposed and the other image has the opposite condition. The output image should have balanced exposure over all areas. Select the two input images. You can use up to nine images. Photox is now combining the images. It detects high contrast pixels shown on the edges here and uses them to align and combine the images. are now combined. You can use this dialog to adjust the relative contribution of each input image to the output image in the dark areas and the bright areas of the output image. You simply manipulate these curves to do that. You can optimize the brightness distribution. Select the three input images. You give the images a rough alignment with the mouse. It doesn't have to be too good. That's good enough. is now aligning the images. The alignment is done. see here that there was a slight change in the sky between this image and this image. You can generally eliminate that by blending the images into each other a little bit. This does not affect the sharpness as you can see here. This is the metadata that typically comes out of the camera automatically. There's a huge amount of stuff here. Any of this can be searched on. This is a short report for the items that are most commonly used to uh, edit and search. You edit metadata mainly with this tool. Here you can enter uh, the date and time if that isn't uh, automatically provided by the camera. You can provide a rating, uh, you can add captions and comments, and you can add tags. Tags are done just with a uh, point and click like this, add and remove tags. Recent tags are provided as a convenience when you need to tag a series of images that share a lot of the same tags. It makes it easier to find the tags. The available tags are here. There's a program to create and edit those tags. I use
a fairly limited tagging system. You can invent hundreds of tags if you want. There's, you can create as much room as necessary. Images can be searched using any tag, but the main search function is this one. It has uh, those items which are most commonly used. Uh, you can search by date, you can search by rating, you can search uh, for tags, uh, you can search for captions and comments or any words in those captions and comments can be searched, and you can search by file names. File names include the names of any directories that contain the image files. You can search on those as well. You can simply enter names or partial names and any matches will be found. This search found 55 images. Also search using a map. If you want to find all of the photos that you have made from a given place, you can do that just by clicking on a map. Geotags can come automatically from the camera if the camera has a GPS receiver. If not, you can enter the geotags manually. Um, the latitude and longitude can generally be supplied automatically from the internet like this, so that all you have to enter is the city and country. Batch tools are available to add tags to a large number of images at once. Also, geotags can be added in batch. Now I will talk about collections. Collections are a set of images taken from anywhere in your image database. Uh, collections can be can have names. The images can be rearranged, added, deleted, etc. The image files are not duplicated. The collection is just a list of existing image files. I've created a new collection called Demo. Now I'm going to search around and find some images to put in there. enough. So we now have a collection, these images. <coughs> Once we have a collection, we can rearrange the images just by moving them around like that. We can <coughs> add, add some more images to the collection.
on slideshow. You begin a slideshow by selecting the images that are going to be included. You do that by selecting a collection that has been previously prepared. <coughs> These are the transitions available between images. You can select which ones to use and whether you want to use them randomly or sequentially. You can also, on a image by image basis, select transitions, display times, the zoom in location and duration, etc. I'm just going to let it go now to show all of the various transitions that are available. That's more than I could have done in an hour. <clears throat> so, um, I think the thing I wanted to really emphasize is A, it's free. B, it runs interactively, instant feedback on almost everything it does on a small computer. Very different from the GIMP very different from Photoshop, and very powerful, very quickly in your own hands as you get to know it. Uh, if you're going to play with it, I want to emphasize right off the bat, I don't think Mike mentioned this in his talk, uh, he talked about the gallery. I don't even have photos open right now. Can see now lower. <coughs> One, one caveat on the small computer thing, if you have a big camera and a small computer, it may not be as good a match as if you have a small camera and a small computer. This does, this does work with raw images. It works with RAWs. I don't, but it does. No, yeah. I work with RAWs. I have a big camera, and Mike says that my computer's memory is small and I should accept my flogging. Uh, so that if you're going to use a monster megapixel camera in RAW, you're going to need your 8 gigabytes um, or you're going to have lousy performance. However, he did, I, I email with him also because Dick introduced me. Uh, he did put in a feature to resize RAWs for you. Um, so that I can work on a smaller side of our argument. What does a resize raw mean? Yeah. yeah. What does a resize raw mean? I can I, I basically save out a, a decimated tip. Okay. So, how do you scale? Talking about like 50 megabyte raw images, like something of that order, or, yeah. or a larger? Um, they, they, they can be. Um, but he, he, he uses floating point in turn, in, internally to make the math in C easy and not get into all of the corner cases of um, integer math and scaling. Mm -hmm. But this means that they take up uh, a lot more space in, in RAM than if it was uh, a bunch of shorts. Mm -hmm. um, so the, 
is not using layers makes it less memory hungry than some programs, but is using floats makes it more memory hungry. But can you talk about how, uh, how it scales? Uh, I'm sorry, say again? I'm wondering uh, how, how well this would scale. I have all my images on a scale, yeah, file server. Scale them what? A lot of images? Yeah, I've got like about 1.5 million photos. I'm wondering how well this I don't know the perfect. answer for that scale, that size. Uh, I can tell you that I typically at once run about 30,000 photos. And in fact, let me go out. Um, this, this will make sense better if I do it. I will close Photox. And I think you just closed the web browser. Drop an image there. And when I click on Photox, the first thing it's going to do is look at its index of my approximately 30,000 photographs. And it will look, see if any of them are new, in which case it will make a small image, a thumbnail, and it will put it in its file with appropriate information. Uh, so it will riffle through 30,000 images, and you'll see it doing it right now. I'll just press the button, and there they come. Now, the first time you do this, when it's and making 30,000 it's done. So 30, that's what I wanted you to see. Chill, wait. That's what I wanted you to see, that couple of seconds. Yeah, 30,000. Yeah, you mean that will scale proportionally, uh, just straight line scaling. So it will take longer. It depends on the speed of your computer, and it depends on uh, uh, whether you've already indexed. Joe is about to go to a next step, but I want you to focus on the time. For your extra photos, it will stop right there and grind through each one of them. If you're adding 30,000 photos, go have lunch. Uh, it's got work to do. But you don't add 30,000 at once, except for when you set it up, typically. I find I might be waiting five minutes, typically, to gurgle through my few hundred I brought back that I made that slideshow from. I probably had a thousand pictures raw, not, not raw format, but I had probably a thousand photos from the trip. And you saw about 200 in the slideshow that was running at the beginning. Uh, they, none of them were the ones I took. They were all processed. They were all smaller than my original ones. And they were all better <coughs> for looking at than my original ones. So, um, I just want to mostly wonder is after the lengthy uh, initial import, uh, how will the performance be when there are that many images in the. Uh, well, again, it's going to depend on your computer and your number. But it will be linear compared to what I just did. I just did 30,000 and you saw it flick right through in a couple of seconds. So no, I think the answer is better through. than you're going to find elsewhere. I think that's the answer, but I'm not positive for everything that's out there. In short, this has worked over time to put the tools at your fingertips in a sensible way, to put the reflex action of what you're doing up on the screen in live time as you do it, so you can move a curve or move a slider, or just drag the right edge of a photo to rotate it and see it happening. And it, in short, it's speeding up and making more directly under your fingertips everything I can think of that you could want. Some jobs, you saw examples in the uh, uh, piecing together of several photographs into a panorama of the balancing several photos into an HDR display where all the brightnesses and densities have been optimized across photos, picking the best from each. These take time. These don't run in real time. They're still damn fast compared to where I've seen them with other programs. And I used to have to go and move into a different program to do things like that rather than find them all under my fingertips. So I think they're a great compromise but they're not the ones that are instant. Almost everything I do is instant. And I love it. So it's free. I tell you, drag it in. Don't put in one and a half million photos. Well, not all. Put in 20,000 photos and play. Then put in the rest and pick them up in the morning. Uh, that's the easy way to do that. But give it a shot. 
don't, don't, don't go to the Ubuntu Software Center for it. Go to the author for it. Actually, there's another place where it's news. Go to the author for it. Why will you dream of going to another place instead? Here you are. You've got a great author. Yeah. He's giving you the latest. And uh, he's live and he talks. I guess the so. only reason is that if you use R, so. AUR is, is the latest. So, so yeah. to me, very simple. Uh, another thing you can do is there is a place where you can set which um, uh, folders <coughs> are going to be uh, included. And so you could just have a folder that, of things you're working on now be the ones that are active in it and leave the other ones off on the side. Oh, in fact, I have, there are, option, there are user options for how you want it to come up and what general settings are the ones you prefer. For instance, every time I tap in a full photo, it will enlarge around the point where I tapped. Uh, so, how much? Well, you can set whether you want it to double in size in two taps, in three taps, and five taps, you can adjust the tuning for things like that. And the one I adjusted here is I came up, remember I just ran my initial startup the way I've got it set, and up top it says recent files. This is not one of my uh, folders from when I took the pictures. It's not one of my collections that I sorted out from my pictures and made into a separate collection because I want to show it to you. It's just what I was recently looking at, no more, no less. So, uh, you may remember I clicked on that one most recently, earlier. Uh, so in any case, I see one here I want to tell you about. I want to do something with it. The second and third ones, uh, this fellow and this fellow. You see my cursor? Up? Yeah, you can. Uh, look at them close, the labels. This one is 4,608 pixels wide. This one is 1,024 pixels wide. This one has a name just like the other name except for the .v01. It's version one edited <coughs> from the one on the left, which is the raw file. What I call raw. It's not raw format. It's a, uh, a JPEG format from my camera. And I'm glad. And Mike Cornelison has a discussion in the user guide as to why he thinks that your continuing to work with RAW is usually a mistake. This is controversial. I'm not telling you it's the answer. It's his take on it. It's also my take on it now, after I've looked. He's saying that you're carrying more pixels than your eye is going to be able to handle. You can already do the massaging anyway without it. Don't keep so much data unless you're hell-bent on doing it and want to buy extra RAM to juggle it with. Controversial, but it makes good sense to me too now. So I'm going to go to the one that was my big JPEG. I'll just click on it, and there it is. And my, no, actually I'll go to the other one. I'll just uh, right-click now, go to the next one in my set. Well, not where I am. Okay. Uh, oh, and I started telling you there's basically two halves to this whole program. The gallery and the file. And you saw I'm going up to the upper left and clicking. We're up now. It says gallery. And if I go up there, I'll move from a file to the gallery. With that particular file highlighted, the yellow topped one, in the gallery, you found the place within the gallery where that particular image is. And uh, I wanted to go to the next one first on purpose because this one is not high resolution. It's high resolution for what I'm going to be seeing through the projector, but it's not the resolution I use for a two foot by three foot print, for example. Uh, and we'll prove it by zooming in. I've got it set for three clicks to double the size. And if we have some extra time, I'll tell you one of the world's great stories. I just learned it. It's about this picture. Uh, Neiman Marcus in San Francisco, right by Union Square, uh, demolished a famous old building in order to build a modern building. And half of San Francisco was in an uprising over it. 
And the compromise that came out was they took the best part of the old building, moved it over 100 feet into the entrance of the new building, <laughs> took apart a glass dome and sent all 2,600 pieces of it to Boston for refinishing, sent it back, rebuilt it, and it's inside a flat glass exterior where you can see it from outside. You can go in and admire it. And we're looking straight up toward the top. It's called the uh, City of Paris uh, Dry Goods Store. And uh, it was the biggest department store in San Francisco, the best wine cellar in San Francisco. Stuff from France in San Francisco. It originally happened the year after the gold rush, 1849. The 49ers struck it rich. San Francisco is where they set up shop as a near town to build up. And over in Nimes, France, a fellow said, I'll bet they'd like to buy stuff. We've got good stuff. And he loaded up a ship. And he sailed out the Mediterranean and across the Atlantic and the South Atlantic and around the Horn and all the way up to San Francisco, ready to open a store full of his goods. It never happened. So many people came out by rowboat. They sold the ship out before he got to shore. And he went back and came back and opened a little store, and it became the biggest department store in San Francisco. And in 1906, it got burned out and somewhat demolished by the 04, the earthquake. When six. Oh, six. Six. I got it. I didn't know it. Uh, and uh, so they built an even bigger, better one. And that's when they ordered in this ultimate glass dome, this wonder of wonders from 1906. And uh, so it's still there today. The building isn't, but the dome got transplanted 100 feet across. Well, the seal on the very top of it, it's a little hard to see here, isn't it? But it's from the seal of the city of Paris, the official city seal from way back when. And it's a ship. And the motto of the store became that, and all that good stuff. So what I want to do is, I'll just right click and go back to where I came from in one step. I didn't have to figure out how far to bail back. And uh, what I want to do is go to the set of actual images I came home with. And I do that very easily by finding any one of them and remember it kept my latest ones. So the ones that were at my fingertips are still at my fingertips. I'm going to say File, Sync Gallery. Poof! This is the gallery of the original pictures I came home with, with that one highlighted. So I'm in exactly the right place, except it's the one I made. So if I go back one with the left button, here's the one I made it from. Let's go look in at that one instead. A little sharper? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is the point. So you want to keep your originals for doing new things. Let's do a new thing. Let's, uh, I'll go back out on it. It's a sharp one, though. I'll say edit, trim, rotate. I want to close up just of that boat. Go pretty close to the boat. Now I think I'll make it 16 by 9. I'll lock the ratio. So if I move a corner, the ratios will still stay the same for the proportions of the image. Whoops. Uh, I'm just bouncing around because I'm tired. Come on, Jim. Let's start that again. Why don't you Cancel. just right click to go back? What? Why don't you just right click to do now? Well, I thought I would, but it didn't. <laughs> now it did. So I will trim rotate. Set it for 16 by 9, which is standard wide screen on these computers. So make nice wallpaper, among other things, which it made. And I think I'd like about that much. By the way, the official San Francisco Christmas tree, you know, Boston and New York have official trees. In this old dome is the official one for San Francisco, and that's it. We're looking up the side of it. Poor guy, he 
Never got his boat unloaded. I guess he did, but not the way he planned. I think that's about what I'd like, so I'll say done. And this time it's sharp. And all I'll do for now is maybe resize it to something I would like. Uh, resize and 1366. And I'll hit tab to get the other dimension. It just comes in automatically. That's and because you have lock rig aspect ratio. What, Joe? Because you have lock aspect ratio clicked. Right, because I set that 16 by 9 ratio. And uh, I could unlock the aspect ratio and drag things around. I didn't want to in this case. Now I'll say done. Now it's sized for my screen. I'm not wasting extra pixels. And I'd normally go in and do something magical here. He calls it Voodoo Enhance. And that's Mike's way of telling you, you're not in charge. I'm not in charge. A formula is in charge. If you like it, you can have it. If you don't, just undo. But maybe it'll make your picture better. It adjusts about six parameters at once, instantly. One, two, three, tap. I don't think I saw any change. I did, did in, the, in the Christmas tree balls. I will park the cursor on undo, redo, and I'll hit the left button. That's before. That's after. Yeah, I see the Christmas tree balls are what's getting changed here. I'll go to before. That's it. See it? After. Did I get it? Off of the uh, undo yeah, I slid off it. That's what happened. Wait a minute, you went too far back. Right. Uh, so redo, and then redo again for the improved one. Uh, yeah. I agree, that's improved. So I'll keep it. I could improve it further. For now, I don't really want to, but I would like to sharpen it. Repair, sharpen. I told you I had three different tools. I like on sharp mask, and I've got it set in a way I like most of the time. So look at some particular line of detail and see if it gets sharper. One, two, three, what? A little bit sharper. I saw it on here. I don't know if there you could see it well. Pretty good. <coughs> I'm going to stop there for now. I'll say done, and I'll save it as a new version. And now there'll be a version 02 of that particular image. And that's how you do the actual work on something. Bottom line, half the time you're in the gallery looking at the set. What set? It can be a lot of kinds of set. It can be a set you're doing on the fly. It can be a collection you set up last week or three years ago. It can be the set you came home with out of the camera. There are different kinds of sets. You've only got one copy of each image. The collection doesn't have images in it. It has references to images. They're where they belong, wherever that is. So you don't end up with duplicates you can't keep track of anymore. It's lovely. Chill. And if you tag, put proper tags on, you can select a collection based on the tags. Let's do one. Uh, and, uh, I've got these pictures from California, about a thousand or so. Some of them, and you saw I'm keeping them right in with the other set, some of them start with dot V, zero something. Well, I, never get, I never get ten of a single one, so mine will start with dot V, zero. So let's go back. Here's, here's an image. Let's go to... Uh, I, I'm in file mode. I'm going to go to metadata, search images. I do this a lot. It's already set. Search files dot v zero. So from all the thousand files in here, I'm going to just select those out. I'm going to use the current set only, not all my 30,000 files. And uh, let's see what else. I'm going to make a gallery out of them. <coughs> And I guess that's about all I have to tell you, really. I'll proceed. And that's how long it took to get the 208 edited ones out from the 1,200 or so now, the originals plus the edited ones. You just fish them right out. They're there. Where are they? 
they're in a gallery, because that's what I said. So, so there they are. These are the edited ones. They're not exactly the set you were looking at in the slideshow, because they're in the exact order they got sucked out in. And I've flipped some of them around in my collection. I've moved them around to be in more logical positions. So this isn't exactly my collection. It sure is the raw material. It just happened like that. I can go through 30,000. It might take two seconds to do the whole job. Very, very nice file system in there. Indexed like mad. Uh, so I think that might be all I wanted to tell you. I want to give you some hands-on feel for how easily I grab, change, and find, put into a collection, uh, and run as a slideshow. It's all just bing bang, easy to do. Um, but there's a lot of tools in the box. Again, the F1 button brings you to the place in the user guide for the operation you're currently doing. It's pretty good. I put in a considerable amount of time on the user guide myself as a volunteer. Uh, Mike says, well, if they're not programmers, why are we even trying? And I say, no, 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 no. You just need a better sentence in here, Mike. And I do a lot of that. Uh, and it's gotten very smooth over the last few years, in part due to my particular input, because Mike really listens to me when I say that. I don't know why. I like it. I'm not going to rattle that up. Uh, can this work on multiple machines? I, I have all my photos on a uh, file server that access over NFS. Oh, yeah. I won't care. Uh, you're going to tell it where you want it to look for photos. Period. If you're networked into somewhere else, just so, tell it. So, and so, you can so, tell it multiple places. You don't have to pick one. So if I added a bunch of tags on my desktop machine at home, and then I connect with my laptop, uh, do I have all those tags, or are those tags only on my desktop machine? I think you have it all. How tags. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If I the tag tags. Photos, I tags are in the metadata, and the yeah. metadata is attached to the the yeah. Tags are written back into the JPEG file. Collections are saved in a hidden dot directory, as are mashup project files. But the list Just of about everything is in the metadata of the JPEG, mm -hmm. but not collections. As you invent a new so, tag, it gets added to the metadata of the actual image. Okay. Now, when you look on your computer in the Photox that's running on your computer, you're seeing a list of tags. But the list of tags you're seeing is the tags that are on the images you're referencing. It's not a list that's built into the computer, if you will. It's built into the images, wherever they may be. I think we've got you covered. But we're also greatly slowing down the transfer if it's over a wireless connection, etc. <laughs> So I don't know the trade-offs on speed. Yeah, or a, even a wired connection is a lot slower. Uh, even an external, for instance, an external hard drive. So you're going to tell us the is slower. The practical question is what difference does it make and who cares? When you run it, you'll tell us how well it goes. I see the transfer time as being not nearly as fast as the index in the home computer, the local computer. In the collection data? Uh, wait, no. finish that question first, yeah. So the, the collection data, as Bill said, is separate from that. So uh, can that be stored? Can that be configured to be stored on the uh, file server as well, or is that always going to be on the uh, local desktop? I'm not aware that it can be done other than locally. I'm not telling you it can't. And you get to talk to the programmer too. And it's open source code. You want to be a programmer and say, Mike, look what I did. You want to incorporate it or not? But I don't know the answer. I don't use the collections because they're not portable to other applications. Um, but, I, but I use the tags because they are. The tags are right in the image. The tags are stored in the JPEG itself? Or is in, it in, in the, the metadata, metadata, yeah. And they're, they're, they're actually and indexed separately. Yeah. And they're actually a standardized format. Okay. So that they're they're available to other applications. Oh, okay. They're in the metadata, but when you do your indexing, you're seeing that. Right. 
so it creates a separate uh, database with, 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 with indexed all the metadata, right, from the, from the files themselves. From the images themselves. Right, so it searches through its own index rather than having to rifle through every file when you do a metadata search. Right, and that, and that fast index I showed you of 30,000 yeah. yeah. was pulling that in. Uh, the speeds surprise me. He's very good. And I think he's optimizing for what most of us want for optimizing. And we looked at a lot of other programs. And then we decided to major on this one. So that's, that's what I know about it. And uh, I can tell you that my pictures are a lot better than they were with other programs a lot sooner. It's, it's just more responsive. It helps me get there from here. So one problem that I've had with uh, photo managing, editing programs like this is they always want to index everything. And I work with a lot of, I'm going to dump these files in this directory temporarily and work on them, and they're not going to be there the next time. Is there a way to use this in a way where it's Oh yeah, I do that all the time. So uh, For one thing, you can just Go to a photo anywhere on your hard drives, right click on it, and open it in Photox. Okay. Just do it. Another thing I do very commonly is I've got a really nice photo, I just got it right, but I want to email it to somebody. Mm -hmm. And not this size. Right. I resize it, click on copy to clipboard, put it in my email message, and ship it. When I go to move up on Photox, it says, wait a minute, do you want to save this or not? I say not. It's gone, but I've reset it for the small right. version. It's a very common operation. But could so you that's two different ways, one starting from one end, starting from the other end, Dick, of using you, it without all the indexing. Why don't you show where you set up which um, uh, folders get included Sure. in these um, user settings? Um, you've got pictures on three different computers. You've got pictures you want, pictures you don't want, at least for today's work. What do you want to index? Well, uh, first of all, I normally go to the place I want to be working by just clicking on some recent picture if I've got one, just to get there faster. I want to go to that batch and file, sync gallery. And now I've got a gallery that's in what I'm working on. But if I want to do the general operation instead, I go to Tools, User Index, Center. Image Files. Which are these first two settings here, I'll, I'll talk about all three. Um, the first one is what files do I want it to be indexed in? Where does it go to look? Well, I normally go to look in slash home slash pictures seemed like a reasonable thing for me to use. It's there and I use it. And almost everything I do is in there, at one level or another, down within there. So that's where I typically go to set up for this. I don't want to click this button, by the way, after I, after I define my terms. I'll open it, but I won't process it. So, and that's where I'm going right now. I'm going to, I can put in as many things here as I want. I can get all the pictures in here, I can get all the pictures in there, I can go over to a different computer and get the pictures in there. But this is where it's going to build the index. Now when I tell it to proceed, I can start twiddling my thumbs. If they're a long ways off on a slow connection, if there's a hell of a lot of them, it's pretty fast, but it's doing a big job. So this is the one I'm not going to press just casually now and stop the show for a while. But that's how you do it, it's very easy. Next case. You can add a directory. Next case, uh, sure, you can, you can add as many folders as you wish. I could go to three folders down within pictures and ignore the rest of them if that's what I want to do. And you can just browse right to them, click on them, and they're in there. You don't have to know their names uh, other than just recognizing the click on them. So, easily done. User settings. Okay, I told you. Uh, there, zooms for two times. I've got three set. I can go up and down so I can have it expand faster or slower to my taste. <coughs> down at the bottom, I have some very, very slick things you can do with raw uh, 
files, if we're playing with raw files, Mike and I say, yeah, I probably don't want to bother doing that. But since you won't believe us, here's some tools for doing it. Uh, and they're quite powerful. Uh, uh, JPEG file uh, quality. JPEG file quality, you know about that probably. The higher you make it, uh, the more accurate it is, but the less compression you get. 90% uh, seems to work very nicely in general. Uh, image pan, uh, different ways you can pan across an image depending on what you like to do. You can switch them on and off from one to another quickly. Menu style, I recommend icons plus text unless you have a very tiny screen and you need space. Uh, and uh, startup display, I have recent files gallery, but you could have your favorite photo or your favorite folder or whatever you would like, etc. So that's one, and the final one in that batch of settings is tools, keyboard shortcuts. How many would you like? Uh, you can infect more as you go, but it's got ones built in. You could change what they do. If you're not working in English, you could change for better mnemonic values, uh, or you just add things, lots of things. So, uh, so those are uh, basically things you use for tuning. I showed you how you can quick look through a hell of a lot of photos and pull out the ones you want. You can do it by tags, you can do it by uh, girlfriend's name, you can do it by anything you can invent. Uh, and combinations, any combinations of them you wish. And they'll come up just for those combined hits. Uh, so it's got to be 2012 in Venezuela. Bing bang. Uh, whatever. Um, <coughs> What else would you wish you had <coughs> in your photo processing equipment? I'll tell you one I wish I had. Print. It's not in here, but this prepares everything, and then you just print it. Whatever you've got for your printer, well set up and balanced and ready to go. Uh, what else might I want? Uh, I was looking at one today. I don't know if I'm recommending it or not. But I want to throw all my new photos up on my website in a gallery you can look at. And I want them to fade after they've been there for 14 days. I want them to go away. I just want the latest ones up there all the time. Majiro, M-E-J-I-R-O. I just wrote to Michael <coughs> this morning. I said, is this something to be a really nice match with what we're doing or not? And I'll look at it later, because I had other things to do today, and here I am. Um, but uh, there's things it doesn't do that have to do with photos, uh, but not much. And it fits in nicely with them. Oh yeah, I left out one interesting one. Plugins. It can handle plugins. More interesting, it can handle the GIMP as a plugin in it if you want. You can do all kinds of strange things with plugins. You might find you'll slow down your computer. You might find you'll want more RAM or something. But uh, it's incredibly flexible on some things that go way beyond what I thought were reasonable. And I particularly like the effects. Just a few of my slides I was showing at the beginning had artsy effects. <coughs> but it has a lot of power for doing those things quickly. A lot of nice effects. I got very interested recently. Let's see if I can find one quick. I'm in this gallery. And I think it was, I'll make it real small because it's a very bright picture. I want to see it quickly. And I'll go up to the top. It's going to be near the bottom. And show up like mad. I'm not nearly near the bottom there. No, I'm not, am I? A lot of red in it. Nice, not red enough. Well, those are red. Those are awful pictures, by the way. I, it was so interesting. I kept. I want to show you that. Nothing to do with Photox. To do with the camera. This dates to 6500 BC. It's a small copper casting, hot metal. It's an abstract double screw, 
ram's head. This is a ram's head. 6500 BC, as abstract as you could ask for, just perfectly smoothly. I wish I had a sharp picture. Where's and the going? problem is my focusing was bouncing off the glass. I should have taken it at a wider angle. And I knew it as soon as I walked away from when I had the chance. But um, it's beautiful and it's so old. Boy. We invent new things, but we forget how good things were in some ways also. Uh, oh, two halves to this program, the file you're working on or the gallery that you're looking at a lot of files in. I want to go back to gallery. Instead of doing the clicking, I can just hit G for gallery and F for file. So I don't have to go back looking with a mouse if I don't want to. I'm still looking for that bright, bright, bright red one just for one example of that kind of stuff. There might be others with it. I'll find this a little light. I'll just look what happened here. It's nighttime. I wasn't holding the camera that steady. The lights moved around like crazy. That can give you great abstract photos when you process them correctly. This is a really interesting alternate way to use a camera, if you will. And I'm looking for an example built on that. You know, that give you the concept. Oh, come on. It's in here. I know it's in here. I saw it, Dick, go down. One more. Uh, in the second row, fourth, yep. fifth in. And that's what you can get when you take one of these little jitters and process it with some of the effects that are built in. And it's just an example. There's a whole world of abstract, creative things you can do with a camera based on the effects that are built in. Uh, so that's just a hint of it, and um, I wanted to do that too. That's the opposite of what we engineers tend to think about. Um, but other people do wonderful things <coughs> in those directions. Um, were there other questions? Um, <clears throat> I'm similar to you in one thing you said. Wait, I also use a 240 gig SSD for tri-boot. Uh, but I work for with a lot of raw files <coughs> that I tend to archive. So I have all my files on external drives. I don't know how Photox handle external drives. For example, when plugging in, it might automatically index, but what will happen if I remove the external drive? Well, if you're expecting the index to work, you just confounded it. Yeah, I mean... What, well, other than that, I don't see any problem. Yeah, I mean, when I remove the drive, well, it delete all the index, causing that next time when I plug it in, I have to do I it think again. while the drive is in place, you can do anything you want with it. I would close Photox before I pulled it out. Because <coughs> I could do other things, but it's very easy to close Photox and to open it, and you know you've cleared that particular about to disappear set of images. Um, Meanwhile, you could save on that drive anything you wanted, or you could put it back on the temporary connection. I okay? think what Makes he's sense. saying is, is it going to have to re-index it if he takes it off and then does something and then starts Botox again with it? it I'd want it to re-index it. Otherwise, I'm playing games of what changed in between and I'm not finding out. So I would certainly... Uh, you probably want to set... Now, you don't have to work hard to re-index it. All you have to do is know that it's looking for that, that folder, and bang, very quickly does it. Yeah, if it doesn't find the folder, it will just skip it, yeah. I think. Yeah, but, but I wouldn't want to uh, ever lie to any program about which files I just snuck off when I didn't tell it. That's, <coughs> that's cutting off the branch you're sitting on. I don't like to do that. Yeah, I... I mean, my question was kind of related, but I don't know that you got to the, the heart of it. If I wanted to work in some directory which had a bunch of images in it, but it's not in that index list, um, does it does it try to in, it won't try to index them, right? It indexes when it starts up, and it indexes when you go there and say, "Do a re-index for me." Those are the only times it indexes. Okay. In general, I think it's very logical once you get the hang of it. And in general, the way 
way I'd want it to be logical, as much as I can say that for any program. Uh, like most really good Linux programs, it's been designed by people who want the best tool for themselves. And they keep going back until they get it right. So suggestions come in, but the structure hasn't changed for a long time. It's fiercely efficient, and it does give you that extra flexibility. You can go out and just grab a separate image and work on it, too. Do you see another question somewhere? Okay, Dick, thank you very much. Thank you.